Hello everyone, I'm Jin Liu, a PhD student from University of Wisconsin Madison. I'm going to present skill and performance in the file system semi market kernel. This is the joint work with Anthony Ivan Chenhao in Wisconsin, Sudakshin from Ruggers, and my advisors Andrew and Ramsey. These days, modern storage devices have made substantial progress. Precisely, the excess latency has come down to the several microsecond level. Therefore, the kernel storage stack faces the same kilo microsecond problem as other fields. Look at the graph. The raw device success takes only around 6.5 microseconds, whereas accessing the device through the kernel file system nearly double the latency, which naturally leads to the question as how to close the hardware software performance gap in storage stack. Previously, two categories of work tackled this problem. The first type is library-based approach, where libraries are capable of accessing the device in application address space, reducing the overhead in device access parts. However, exposing the device to the untrusted applications complicates the device permission management, isolation, and sharing. An opposite direction is to move the entire file system into the device. Despite performance, this works usually assuming device has better computing capability and may be limited by hardware constraint. Instead, our approach would return centralized our multiplacing as opposed to the library-based approach, thus taking a simpler avenue to support the isolation and sharing between applications. Meanwhile, rely on minimal and more realistic assumption of the device, that is, a microsecond-level device that adhere to the NVMe protocol. In this work, we adopt file system semi-market kernel approach. A semi-market kernel is a partial or free OS subsystem that runs as a user load process. But unlike the traditional microkernels, a semi-market kernel is semi, in the sense that it works in tandem with the monolithic kernel that's coexisting and collaborating with other kernel components. Prior works have explored the semi-market kernel approach in networking domain, and the recently available user-level device drivers makes it possible for us to investigate such approach for file system. There are many benefits for file system semi-market kernels, First, the development and deployment velocity. Kernel development and deployment are generally slow, whereas more developing efforts and tooling can be utilized for a user level file system. Second, contrary to the traditional wisdom that microkernel suffers from large overhead, the semi microkernel can be carefully specialized for device access and optimized solely for one single OS subsystem, the file system, thus realizing good performance. In addition, in modern multi-core computer, the file system semi-market kernel can scale independently from the applications by decoupling the execution context from the application phase, leading to better performance in a scaled scenario. Lastly, compared with high-performance library-based approaches, a file system semi-market kernel avoids the complexity from exposing devices to the untrusted applications. Building a high-performance file system semi-market kernel has several challenges. First, the base performance. Two techniques are practically critical. The efficient inter-process communication between the application and the file system process, and a well-optimized device success. More challenges come from the fact that file system workloads are essentially dynamic. For example, we have first application runs on-disk random read workload, then it comes in a pen-intensive workload, followed by a disk-bounded scan. At this moment, we may find one call is not sufficient to extract the free device bandwidth while perform request processing simultaneously. And the semi microkernel lets in one more call to utilize the device. Later on, a brush workload credibly access some hotkeys, stressing the request processing capacity of file system, which requires to use one more call to handle this burst. When the burst end, we want to reduce the call number for better CPU utilization. Basically, the key challenge here is to smoothly handle the dynamicity and heterogeneity of application demand with reasonable CPU resource. In this work, we built UFS, a file system semi market kernel, for performance and scalability from scratch. It effectively addresses the challenges. UFS is a further functional file system with crunch consistent support. It offers good base performance and it can dynamically scale up and down according to demand. We now take a look at the basic architecture of UFS as shown in the graph. We have a file system that runs as a user load process called UServer. UServer directly accesses a storage device via NVMe command. The device driver employs pooling such that UServer never needs block for I.O. 
The work could also manage the pin memory for DMA transfer and organize it and block wrapper cache. All the applications will connect to the file system through ULIP, which provides POSIX API. The library also provides list-based caching for file contents and open files to avoid unnecessary IPC in the reading parts. We leverage CPU cache to cache transfer between ULIP and U server as a communication channel where each file system code becomes a message of cache line science. For better protection, each application has its own message ring to a single worker. With increasing demand from applications, the file system will need more CPU calls. That is, U server needs multiple workers. U server aims for scalable design, specifically over sharing, locking, and blocking. We carefully design the data structures to be private to each worker, like the buffer cache bitmap, to avoid synchronization overhead at the server side. Multiple workers will not share a message ring connected to one application. UFS addressed several key problems through its design. First, for scalability goal, we adopt shared nothing architecture to boost the data parallelism. UFS divide file system states and data into threads. To support this data parallelism, we introduce runtime anon ownership. As discussed before, the dynamic nature of file system workloads requires UFS to dynamically partition data, which needs the mechanism and policy support. So we design the dynamic load management accordingly. The load management has a load balancing component to rebalance inodes and another called allocation algorithm to design the number of calls to use. The parallelism granularity we choose is the inode and we call it runtime inode ownership. When UFS is running, each call will be granted exclusive ownership of a group of inodes. The picture illustrates the ownership by directory tree. These three inodes are assigned to worker 1, and worker 2 hands ownership of these four inodes. Note the files in one directory can locate on different calls. For instance, in the picture, worker 2 and worker 3 both own inodes from one directory. Currently, UFS adopts an asymmetric scheme to partition inodes, where a primary worker, worker 0, is in charge of all the directory inodes and also serves as the default owner of all the five inodes. It is also the central hub to coordinate the inode reassignment protocol. And the rest of threads are secondary workers and can handle all the file operations. To handle dynamic load changes and balance load across codes, UFS has a separate load balancing thread. The load management thread periodically collects load stands from each worker, computes the high level balancing goal. That is, decide each worker's targeting load goal and inform workers accordingly. For example, load managing thread may tell worker 0 to shift the 50% of the load to worker 1. Another responsibility of load managing thread is to decide the number of calls to use also wake up or shut down calls. The realization of load management requires each worker to invoke the inode reassignment mechanism to shift the load between calls. Given the load goal from load management thread, each worker tries to meet it by deciding which inodes to be reassigned according to its local detailed stance. This is a basic framework. Our scaling algorithm is decoupled into two composable components the load balancing algorithm aims to minimize the congestion on each call and thus get maximum performance given a fixed number of calls. Another call allocation algorithm takes care of CPU efficiency and decides the number of calls of user. server. We decouple the two algorithms by using load balancing as a black box. And in each monitoring window, the call allocation algorithm emulates the load balancing result in three conditions, ending one call, not change the call number, and removing one call. By comparing the online emulation result with the configurable CPU utilization goal, load management thread decided which plan to go with. In the paper evaluation, we show that UFS offers good single-threaded base performance and performs well as a multi-threaded microkernel compared with ex 4 through a lot of experiments. We designed benchmark suite to measure the dynamic scaling of UFS and finally demonstrate that UFS can perform and scale well with real application. I will present the real application experiment in this talk. For more detailed results, please check the paper. We run UFS with level DB for two loading workload and five byte CSB workload. The dotted lines show the performance when using EXT4. We can see with increasing number of clients along the X axis, EXT4 does not scale well because the scalability bottlenecks like in journal and device access. Compared with EXT4, UFS has good base performance and much better scalability in all the workloads. 
We also show the maximum number of calls used by UFS here, indicating our dynamic load management is able to adapt CPU usage according to file system workload. Thus, we believe decoupling and scaling file system independently from the application bring large performance benefits. To conclude, we present UFS, a file system semi-microkernel which designs for device performance, delivery, and scalability. UFS demonstrates that the semi-microkernel approach works well for file system, enable flexible scaling to match workload needs. Across a range of micro-benchmark and application workloads, UFS performance scale well. Moreover, a completely user-space file system semi-microkernel like UFS enable us to quickly integrate or prototype ideas like device-specific optimization and application-oriented customization. Our UFS and the benchmarks are publicly available. Please check it out if you are interested. Thanks for watching. I'm happy to answer questions.